All right, so on the desk, we have a Nintendo Switch that was brought in for a broken LCD screen. So we need to replace that LCD. Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to turn the console off because I can't really see where that button is and I can't for the life of me remember uh, off the top of my head where it is. Uh, so let's go ahead and just tear this thing down because the battery's almost dead as it is. First things first, we'll remove the Joy-Cons from either side. We'll start working on that back plate. I'm going to remove the two middle screws on the sides here. Those two middle screws are going to be part of the back panel that holds it in. You don't need to remove any other screws than those middle ones right there. One from each side. Next thing we're going to do is take out these two from the very bottom here. Two more Phillips heads. Pretty soon we're going to be switching over to the tri-wing driver because the uh, Nintendo Switch does have a few tri-wings in there. A lot of people think that Apple was the one who kind of pioneered the tri-wing design when in fact it, as far as I'm aware, was a Nintendo actually. Uh, Nintendo has been using the tri-wings since, well, Nintendo? Uh, Game Boy cartridges? I think Game Boys? Um, yeah. Yeah, pretty much they've been using it for, for a good while. Apple just came out with a slightly smaller version of the Tri-Wing. So now that I've got those screws out, I uh, do have a little bit of an issue with uh, that not staying attached. Okay. Let's, let's come back to that. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Then we've got one more Phillips head here at the top. Let's drop that one out of here. And we are free spinning on that screw, which is not a great sign. When we have a screw that free spins, you want to give it a little bit of pressure for it to grab onto something so it can start spinning with a little bit of tension. So I'm going to add in this pry tool right here to get a little bit of pressure on that screw. And we will start unscrewing it while applying that pressure. And this one has nothing to bite onto. Unfortunately, this one is just straight stripped out. I'm not able to pull on it at all. So, think for a minute. Looks like, yep. Tweezers prying up underneath is the way to go. Cool. So now we've got out all the Phillips heads. Now we're going to move on to the uh, four tri wings that are on the back side. This right here is a tri wing screwdriver for an iPhone. It does the same job, however, it is a little bit smaller uh, than your typical tri-wing that Nintendo uses. So for that I've got another little handy dandy tool kit. This one contains uh, tri-wings as well as drivers for just about anything else you might be taking apart. Um, this one I got from Harbor Freight Tools uh, in store and it cost me about $12. Uh, I've used it almost every day for about three years now and not a single bit has broken on me. So I highly recommend Precision Screwdrivers from Harbor Freight. I'm not a huge fan of the Pittsburgh brand, but this is some weird one-off clone of Pittsburgh. Let's go ahead and remove all of these screws right here. This should release our back panel. Don't forget to take out the game cartridges and the SD card. Ooh, what are we playing? What are we playing? Splatoon 2. Not bad. Not bad. I was kind of hoping for Smash Brothers, but that's all right. I'll take what I can get. So my back panel is held on with a clip. Cool. Back panel's off. Got our SD card and our game card safely over there. 
let's go ahead and start unscrewing from the inside. First you're going to want to remove that SD card reader. It's got one screw that holds it down and then a flex connection right there under this kind of foam grommet. And that foam acts as an adhesive to kind of hold it on there so you just give it a little tug don't pull too hard you don't want to break that connector or anything else on the board it's very important let's continue our tear down we're just going to go around here these are all phillips head screws and as far as i remember they are all about the same size It's really the frame screws that have different sizes and lengths. Um, those you want to keep kind of organized and remember where you took them out of so that you can put them back in the proper places when you're reassembling. Once we've unscrewed those six Phillips head screws, we should be able to pull this off. We'll take a little look around on the board just to make sure there's nothing going on weird on the inside. We can see that there's no water damage on this one. So with no water damage and no corrosion coming out of the power management area, um, we're looking pretty clear on this one. No signs of uh, liquid or anything else inside. Nothing really dirty. Uh, this one's been pretty well taken care of aside from a smashed LCD panel. Next I'm going to disconnect the battery. Usually you would want to use something that's not metal to do this. I've done this a few hundred times so I'm very careful and aware of where my tweezers are going. But you want to put something under there and pry up and out to release that battery connector. Now we can safely start disconnecting things from the board uh, without any other risk. Let's zoom out a little bit, get a full view here. Then we're going to want to disconnect the LCD connector and digitizer connector. So we're going to go over here, we're going to pop open this little flap style flex connector very carefully. We do not want to snap this. There we go. And just kind of work it out. You don't want to give any kind of pressure on it. It's going to cause any rips or tears. We've got that part disconnected. Then we're going to continue around. We're going to unscrew this board right here making sure that we disconnect everything from it first that's kind of important you can see that our board is still held in by a flex connection off to the right side here we're going to disconnect that typically we want to take out the heat pipe uh, for this repair and you know I'm, I'm just for ease of accessing things. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the heat pipe. And we're also going to be removing the fan. Here in just a little bit. This board up here is also connected via the headphone jack. The headphone jack is screwed in. Uh, mostly because that's one of the ports that receives a lot of abuse. And kids are not exactly the uh, most gentle. So we'll take that board out here. You see we didn't actually have to remove the heat sink itself, though it definitely makes it a little bit easier to get to stuff. Let's go ahead and just peel that off. That's just adhesive. We've got our heat pipe thermal compound on the bottom. We'll set him aside right there. Then we've got another LCD connection or possibly the digitizer on this one. So we're going to disconnect that guy right there. Alright. Now that we've got it all disconnected, it looks like that's going to be kind of a tricky one to route through the board. Um, I'm thinking that we're going to have to take the board out to do this. I really wasn't looking to do that. Uh, but mm, let's let's assume. Let me let me check the new part because I haven't really even looked at the new part yet. 
we check the new part, we're gonna see which flex connection is digitizer and which one is LCD. I know that they both have to be disconnected because uh, the LCD tends to come out with the digitizer when you go to remove it. And I don't know what I'm thinking because I'm going to have to take the digitizer off entirely to even get to that flex connection. Um, so let's assume that this guy right here is going to be our LCD connector. Yep. You can see how it would fold over and then wrap up and connect into the board like that. So what that means is we are going to have to probably take the board out here. Let's just go for it. Let's just go for it. See what happens when we take the digi off. And uh, yeah, we'll be right back. So I'm going to remove the digitizer over here at my hot air station. Um, we're going to turn it down just a little bit. We don't want it to be too hot. Just hot enough that we can lift this up. Only want to do it around the edges. We don't want to start melting anything. The digitizer and the screen are made of plastic. So do not want to warp or bend any of this. Give it a little bit of heat. I'm gonna grab my fry tool. And my signature bottle of booze. Get a handle under here just a little bit. We're just gonna add our booze right down those cracks. Once our booze has started to work its way in, we can work our way around a little bit, gently prying as we go. Now if you catch on a spot that's a little bit a little bit more glued down than the rest of it should be, you can always add just a little bit more booze, and that booze is going to keep that adhesive nice and soft, soft enough for you to start getting it out from the part that's stuck. Now admittedly, this does not sound great <laughs> when you're opening it. The sound that the adhesive makes as you separate it does not sound great, but do not worry. It is again plastic, it's not exactly going to crack on you. It can definitely scratch, and I guess with enough force you could probably crack it. But don't be too afraid, you just work your way around. Take it slow, add a little bit of heat if you need it. And I'm not super duper careful right now because I know I'm replacing the LCD. Uh, so I don't need to worry about even cracking the LCD underneath. It's already been done for me. This part's holding on a little bit harder than I want it to, so I'm going to give it a little bit more heat. You can see the heat really, really helps soften up that adhesive quickly. And then once you allow the alcohol to soak in there, it's even more. So now we've got our digitizer separated. Just want to make sure it's all the way open and released. Excellent. I'd say this is separated enough for us to move off of our hot air station and back onto the regular workbench. So let's go do that. Now we're still going to keep our booze handy as the adhesive can start to harden up again as the alcohol evaporates and we're using 99% isopropyl alcohol here so that evaporates very very quickly got just some adhesive strips holding everything on here I'm going to go ahead and pry under those so it can start 
start to really separate this stuff. We'll be replacing the adhesive anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and take that all the way out. Make sure we can slide our LCD and digitizer connectors through the frame. Remember, we want to reuse that digitizer, so we're going to be extra careful on that digitizer flex connection. Don't care so much for the LCD one, just need that out of the way. Now we've got it removed from the frame, we'll set this aside for just a minute, and we'll start working on separating this. For this separation right here, I'm going to be using an X-Acto knife, and I'm going to just work my way around. Very gently. Very, very gently. That's a little more separated than I was kind of hoping. I also noticed that I ripped this flex connection. That's okay. It's just something else to route when we're uh, reassembling. No biggie. Now again, this LCD is very destroyed, so I don't care about keeping it intact. Not exactly removing it in the nicest way possible, though I am doing my best to keep the digitizer from having any issues. This is where our old friend Booze comes in handy again. We'll add a little bit of booze onto him, and a little bit of booze onto him. just like that our LCD is off our digitizer is still intact and we're going to be replacing this damaged LCD panel we're going to toss that off to the side and the first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to disconnect how many times somebody watching this video if anybody's even watching this video tell me how many times I've said first thing I'm gonna do is first thing I'm gonna do is first thing I'm gonna do is let me know in the comments how many times I said that disconnect this little flex down here at the bottom that's where our uh, part of our digitizer is running out to or LCD very important very important it's the LCD connector and that's part that we're replacing that's why I don't care about it I'm gonna flip this guy over I'm going to install the LCD panel first, and then I'm going to work on putting the digitizer back in. It'll be a little bit easier this way on, on me. So we've got our LCD panel. It's got two cables that need to be routed through here. So we've got to fold this guy, and it's going to run up through the board here. This is a very, very tricky way to route your cable because there are resistors right there and caps that are completely in the way of what you're trying to do. So you just carefully route it through. I'm going to do the exact same on this one right here. Carefully just going to fish it through to the other side. And I'm noticing now that it will need to be kind of folded over before getting routed through there. So we've got to kind of hold it at a weird angle here. Okay. Now we're just going to make sure that those are all through. 
exactly the way that they need to be. And we will start locking this LCD in its place. It has gotten stuck on the side here where the digi adhesive is. So I'm going to gently, oh so gently work my way around that to get it out. got that laying in its spot and it is laying flat exactly how we would want it to be next I'm gonna give it a quick wipe with a microfiber cloth to get off any dust and debris that I might have on there Nice. Looking good and clean. Let's go ahead and slap that digitizer down over the top. Now you remember I said we would have to replace some adhesive and there's some that broke here along the bottom. I'm going to replace that really quick before I put on digitizer. Alright, we'll go ahead and route through the digitizer connection off to the side here. You know what? I said I was putting tape on. Lost my train of thought. Didn't put the tape on where it needs to go. Grab this tape right here. We gotta be careful that we don't cover the light sensor that's over here with tape. That's gonna obscure it and that's gonna cause our screen brightness to uh, malfunction a little bit. You can still manually set it, but auto brightness is the important thing here. And I also went over the speaker a little bit, so I'm going to cut, cut some of that extra adhesive away. Pull that off. Now we can route that digi. all the way through. Lay it back down over its spot there. Nice and sealed. Let's flip it over and we'll start routing some of these cables. that cable connected there. Let's reconnect this cable here that somehow got disconnected. Okay, we've reconnected that. Let's reconnect this little guy down here at the bottom. We're going to push it up from either side just to make sure it's all the way plugged in. there. Let's go ahead and plug in our digitizer connector. Lock that little thing down. Get that set into place and reconnect our silicone covered board flex. Let's tighten this little guy back down. And then since I opened it and broke the um, heat sink and the thermal paste on there, I'm going to clean off that heat sink and thermal paste. Grab a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. I actually watched a Hugh Jeffries video the other day, 
and he called it Isa Isa Prottle Isa Prottle something and it's a very weird very weird uh, pronunciation of the word he actually even mentioned he's like I don't think I'm saying it right but it is isopropyl alcohol kind of like propylene propylene glycol it's another mixing thing uh, you'll find that in a lot of stuff actually even shampoo conditioner and some various things for your car cool we've got all that cleaned off let's grab some new thermal compound we'll add just the right amount a little bit less than what Nintendo originally did because Nintendo's exploded everywhere and looks like thermal paste vomit line up our heat sinks on there we don't want to bend that soft aluminum those fins are separated so that they have good heat transmission you can send heat where it belongs cool we got that on there let's grab our screws we will screw our heat sink down over the processor Another reason I wear gloves is because thermal compound is a very, very messy thing. So we've got all that set. Now let's connect up our battery and see if we are going to get a nice LCD image out of this guy. I don't really care about the other parts yet, I'll do that later. We do. We've got a working LCD screen. Excellent. I'm going to let it boot up and make sure that touchscreen still works on there. Console battery is low. Touchscreen is still fully functional. Excellent. Let's power the console back off and we will continue to reassemble everything. Then we'll clean up the screen with all these fingerprints on it. That's kind of important too. We want it to actually look good and look like it has been repaired. <clears throat> Grab our back plate. Lay that over the top. And then we'll start screwing it in. And don't forget to re-plug in your little SD card flex. He's kind of important. And after you put the back plate on and you've reassembled everything, you're going to be kind of disappointed and sad when you realize that you missed that. I only say that because I've missed it several times. I made that mistake before. We're not going to make that mistake again. We're going to plug this guy back in. Lining up the connection is a little tricky once you feel it snap it in like the little Lego that it is. I'll even put that little spacer over the top so a bump or a jolt won't knock it loose. Let's screw that piece back in. Make sure I didn't miss any screws. Oh, we got one missing there. One there. Then we will, yeah, I think we're ready for the back plate, looks like it. Now when I put the back plate on, I like to do the uh, side screws first, because they're going to hold everything together while I flip and rotate this thing all over. And 
this little thing. These kickstands always fall out or break. I'm not a huge fan of the kickstand. It looks like they've had several issues in the past with it, given the number of scratches on either side of this thing. They've definitely had some issues plugging it back in before. I'm going to grab my tri-wings. We're going to put those back on. important not to over tighten anything in here if you'll remember when I was opening it it had that stripped screw that just kind of free spun that can be uh, caused from over tightening it it's important to note that for the most part these screws are going into plastic posts and plastic posts can wear and grind down a lot easier and faster than metal posts What is this non-magnetic screw? We have a non-magnetic screw down here at the bottom. But I don't know why. Non-magnetic screws are actually just a complete waste and engineering wise make literally no difference. Uh, they do not interact with the board. They do not cause electromagnetic interference on these boards actually. Uh, not any board that was made in, well, since maybe the iPhone 4 came out. That one still had one that could be interfered with uh, through magnets, but for the most part, this is the future, 2019, 2020, and um, non-magnetic screws are actually just an annoyance nowadays. We're going to put our game back in, pop in Splatoon, and we might as well put the SD card back in. Seriously, man, I'm not a huge fan of that that hinge. They could have, uh, they really could have improved that one before releasing the console. Whatever. So we've got everything reconnected, and this video is approaching well over 30 minutes. Uh, that I did not expect. So before we removed adhesive using booze, now we're going to clean the screen using booze plus. Boost Plus is equal parts Windex, name brand Windex, with 99% isopropyl alcohol. It evaporates very quickly, it leaves no streaks, and it cleans very efficiently. Grab a little microfiber cloth, we'll wipe it around, and look at that. That is a clean digitizer right there my friends that is a clean digitizer we will slide some joy cons back in the sides here and this little guy is ready to play thanks for watching guys I hope you learned something and I hope this helps you to replace LCD or whatever else you need to replace on your Nintendo Switch helps you learn a little bit about it and I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas I'll see you next time